Dave. Hey, welcome back. We're going to do another segment on the routers. All right, Jim. Yeah, first go around, we you, you ran us through the three or four different routers and some safety and some best practices there, maybe a few things you could do. But uh, in this segment, we could really get into some of the bits. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Well, one of the first things that uh, people do with a router is they edge form. Okay. And there's quite a difference. Um, it's amazing the difference between even a 16th and an eighth inch round over. You think when we get a stud or something, that's usually somewhere between an eighth to a three sixteenths round over that's on that piece of dimension lumber. Um, and so this is also something that you'll do where you don't want sharp edges, okay? So I've got one board here that I show the students and essentially like it's gone from one sixteenth round over to one eighth to three sixteenths to quarter. And you can see the profile is the shape that the router leaves. And you can see the profile is remarkably different. Yeah. Well, it makes me think of our radius edge cedar decking. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you know, unfortunately, uh, getting lumber from you is one thing, but going to the big box stores, you'll often get something that's about a three eighths radius on a stud, which is uh, not optimum. Yeah. So that's one type of bit that's, that's probably the most common for edge forming. But then if you were to start doing some, um, let's say joinery, you might want to use a rabbit bit. So with something like this, as you can see, it has a bearing. And what we do is we change out the size of the bearing. So if you wanted a shallower rabbit, you would simply put a bigger bearing. So oftentimes you just get one rabbit bit and a whole bunch of bearings. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it allows you to come up. So for whatever kind of joinery uh, that you wanted to do, Another one would be a dovetail bit, and that has that sort of V shape, and this is a dovetail bit. That's what you're talking about in that previous segment, yeah. the dovetail. Now remember, we used to hand cut all the dovetails. In fact, some of the fine furniture still is made with hand cut dovetails, but wow. these are a lot easier and a lot more repeatable for someone that's, uh, that's not doing dovetails all day long. Wow. It seems like, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, laminate countertops, you yes. lay an industrial particle board, put a piece of maybe one by two oak on the edge, then do the laminate, and then chamfer it together. Was that yep, a chamfer? Yep, and chamfer it or? together. That's Sometimes you could burn the wood or burn the laminate. You is could. You, and, and this is a problem. When you think about a router turning around at 27,000 RPM, if you go in and stop, then it's going to burnish or burn the wood at that point. Now, you can sand it out but it's nice to keep on going. Okay. Where you run into problems is if, let's say it's a handle hole, you are going to have to slow down when you make the corner. You can't just keep going right. at a reasonable feed rate. Yeah. So normally you'll find that corners do burn. That's where also changing the speed might help. Okay. Yeah. And so you do get a little burn, is that? You can take it off with a compound, you have to sand it. What you know, we what we teach them first is if we can get away from sandpaper, we will. Um, basically, a cabinet scraper, a card scraper, does a pretty good job of taking the burn off. Uh -huh. But um, again, sometimes it's the fact that the bit's not sharp. Uh, there, there's a variety of things at play, uh, and if you can change the speed, sometimes that will help as well. Okay. And then a light sanding is usually perfectly fine. Okay, now, um Looking at that, as a matter of fact, this is a chamfer bit, and that's the bit that you were referring to. Yeah, sure and the great is part is they're all carbide tipped. So with tungsten carbide, which has a hardness really way up there, almost with diamonds, you can make this material work quite a bit. Okay. And I noticed you talked in the previous segment, we've got quarter inch shanks and half inch shanks. Mm -hmm. A lot less chatter with a half inch shank, a lot smoother. And that would be a bit that you really would not want to put in a laminate trimmer. You'd okay. want to put it in a router. Okay. It looks like you might have another pattern of some sort. You want to tell yeah, us what that's um, about? Yeah. One of the things, this is a pattern for a three inch and a one and a half inch round over. And patterns are normally laid on top of something. Okay. The bit that you were talking about with plastic laminate, you would have a piece of laminate over the edge. You would go through and you would want a bearing of some sort to ride on that lower piece right. and trim this off. Right. And we call that a flush trim bit. So if you can imagine, here's the router holding it. So it's going to go along whatever the material is south of the piece. Oh, to get the laminate cut off yeah. and then chamfer. And that's the way you want to do it. Gotcha. And here's the, the big thing I tell all the students, a router cuts best when it cuts least. Yeah. So if you're hogging off a lot of material, that's not so good. 
So you can often do it in stages. So you can take a little off the first time, lower the bit a bit, take it off. And then if the last pass is a 32nd of an inch, you won't find yourself burning anywhere near as much. Oh, that makes sense. But this is a uh, duplicating bit, if you will. This is a, um, a flush trim bit, but there's another kind. Let's take the bearing and instead of being here, if you will, with the router, so that the bearing is down, let's put the bearing up on top. And we call that a pattern bit. And we have patterns and as this goes around, it cuts whatever's south of there. So it's a, you know, the combination of the two bits is really wonderful. They even have one with a bearing on the top and a bearing on the bottom. It's a fairly expensive router bit. Is there pretty much any kind of bit you can think of made? Or is it like custom millwork where you can get a knife made That's a to do question. what you want, um, an old pattern or something? There must be a bazillion router bits out Seems there. Seems like it. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes what you'll do is you'll do one profile with one bit and follow it up with another profile on a different bit gotcha. and get the overall look that you're trying okay. for. Um, small crown molding, they have uh, bits that look, you know, basically yeah. they are small crown and you run the crown on edge and it seems to work pretty well. Now, one of the newer ones too is, um, and, and this is actually an old bit, but this reminds me of all the CNC work. And what happens is you simply undo this piece of tungsten carbide and you can flip it. So when you dull one edge, you can flip it to another edge. Seriously. And all CNC machines have this because as you can imagine, they're running you know, thousands of feet of uh, wood that they're cutting or whatever material. So what'll happen is they'll simply change out the carbide on the bit itself. Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's a very worthwhile bit to have, and that's an old straight bit from, from quite a while ago. Yeah. Now it's de rigueur on every CNC machine. Mm. Super. Yeah. Uh, he just to close out here, could you talk about, is there any sort of job setup, uh, assemblies or things you might do that help you either with routing or changing bits or doing things? One thing that's nice, you can imagine having a small piece, having your hands on the router base and doing this and having to clamp it. But if you have a router table where the router is set up this way and the bit is coming up through oh, the table, okay. then you have both, both hands on the piece of work. Oh, and we make uh, quite a few different small router tables, either on a clamp-on basis or one that's a standalone. And they're great to have on site. Wow, that's, yeah. that totally makes sense. I didn't even think about that. Well, I'm really glad we gathered this second segment. It was super valuable. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.